It's Cloud Goblin time. Hey, by the way, we are doing Tism tonight. That's right. That incredible, the incredible salt mine comes back after uh, who knows how long hiatus over on the incredible salt mine channel. It's me and Bering and uh, Count Tankula. And it's uh, us just kind of shooting the breeze. But uh, if you want to tune into that, that'd be great. Now, I think it'll be like 530 Central. Now, interesting, interesting stuff. A brand new article came out of the Daily Beast earlier, and I talked about how, in general, that article uh, completely destroyed the timeline that uh, Eliza Blue had set up to set herself up as a quote-unquote survivor. Now, it doesn't mean that maybe she didn't get all 11 timelines wrong and mixed up over the years. Um, it certainly doesn't prove that nothing bad ever happened to her, but it draws an immense specter of doubt and even has some of her best friends, people who known her for over 20 years, speak out under their own names and directly call her a liar. Now, some of the most hilarious uh, bombshells from the first part was that she original, originally has claimed in multiple publications that she was in a dangerous neighborhood where she had to sleep on the floor because uh, two rival gangs were always duking it out. Turns out she lived in a upper class, overwhelmingly white neighborhood and never faced any danger whatsoever at all. But it gets worse because interestingly enough, for someone who has made their entire career about being, you know, being quote unquote trafficked, and maybe they were, Turns out that they tried to do the same thing to their friends. Uh-oh. Under her new online name, Eliza Blue began to dance as a, quote, video vixen in mostly low-budget music videos. A YouTube playlist that appears to have been compiled by Blue herself shows her gyrating videos from 2012 to 2013. One 2012 video she posted to YouTube, she filmed herself calling her mother, in uh, to shock her with the news that she'd become a video music video dancer, only discovered that her mom was actually happy for her. Haha. <laughs> in the video, Blue told her mother she wanted to become a music video dancer because of her childhood admiration for the Fly Girls from Living Color. Blue also gave interviews about the video Vixen lifestyle in 2016, speaking in a markedly different tone vernacular that like she was like like very. I don't want to, is urban a race? Do I, if I say her, she sounded urban, am I doing a racism? I don't mean to. She, she does, she's trying to sound black. It, that's okay, right? She, she, she you, I don't want, you know, I don't know. She's got a very different tone, right? For someone who grew up in a farmhouse. Um, but it's a nice, you know, talked about how someone offered her $150,000 for a little P in the V. It's a nice offer, but it's not for me, she said. Still appears that Blue may have engaged in some kind of hookup work around that time. In one interview, interview, she advertised her account on a now-defunct cam site where men could pay money to talk with her. In 2016, Wenzel, her friend, claims that Blue asked her to join as an escort, promising that Wenzel could make $500 a night an offer that stunned both Wenzel and her husband. She was absolutely loving it, Wenzel said. She was bragging about it, saying she was making so much money as an escort, who clearly at least tried recruiting perhaps one more female. Does somebody's wife, uh, does a certain famous Jeffrey guy's wife come to mind maybe not as bad but you know this is somebody that was so against tate and the lover boy stuff and uh, how these women often recruit other women she's clearly at least according to her good friend did it herself and it's also interesting that the 500 dollars a night thing does come back to her being sold for 500 dollars conveniently same amount i don't know Eliza Blue later suggested that this type of work with a pimp might actually qualify as being trafficked, though Wenzel said she didn't meet any pimp or trafficker when she socialized with Blue. 
be it an unnamed, quote, high-profile athlete or otherwise. She's very powerful and very smart, intelligent woman. Nah, I don't think so. I will not discredit her for that, Wenzel says. She knows exactly what she's doing. As proof as she, of, she, of her being uh, traffic blue, often cites the organization, she says, quote, Save my life. Eve's Angels, a Christian nonprofit that serves these victims. In her telling, Blue living in her gangland apartment in 2013 and desperate to leave, she contacted Eve's Angels and discovered founder Annie Dunwald through a YouTube video. In another recent tweet, Blue claimed to have found the group via a web address in a Bible group that they, a Bible group left at the strip club. So she can't even keep that story straight. She can't even keep that story straight. I can't just say I found him on YouTube. I got to say it was in a Bible leaflet at a strip club. The group soon spirited Blue away from her traffickers and into a safe house, quote, three states away. In her account, Blue claims she briefly returned to her traffickers after that escape, but eventually escaped their clutches for good around 2014. Now, just wait. There's more. Nom, 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 nom. Okay, so I think I'm going to do that. Um, that was my last clout goblin. Nom, 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 nom. Because I think, finally, every time I think the story is just, like, dead, something like this happens. But anyway, Dunwall defended Blue from skeptics earlier this month, tweeting that she's the real deal. But like Blue, Dunwald's claims of being trafficked in her own life have come under scrutiny. <laughs> In 2018, Dunwald's own parents and brother filed a defamation suit against Dunwald and Eve's Angels. While Dunwald and her children were living with her family members in Michigan, Dunwald's parents confronted her about their of the treatment of her daughter, according to the lawsuit. In response, Dunwald, Dunwald and her group accused her parents of uh, trafficking children. Dunwell then took the case to the police, leading to a criminal investigation into her own parents, and of course, no charges were filed. Dunwald's claims fell apart after her daughter told her grandparents that Dunwald had told her to fabricate the claims in an attempt to score a payoff from the grandparents the Court of Appeals found. And uh, to make it worse, are you not entertained? If you're one of those edge, you're sitting on the edge, you haven't yet subscribed, Think of all the fun things that we've gone through on this channel. The Jack, the Brie Larson stuff, the Jack Murphy stuff, the, 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 the now this. I've been your Sherpa of through the, through the muck for years. And I hope that I'll earn your subscription or I have earned it today. Now here things get even better. The activist was ordered to pay a judgment of more than $47,000 plus legal fees. As of May 2022, appeals court ruling, the family was still stalled in settlement talks with Dunwall denying the defamation against Well, she lost the lawsuit. So she made up some wild lie about her parents and her own parents sued her into oblivion. This is Eliza Blue's the lady's organization that saved her and also said that she's the real deal. I can't even, I, I can't, it's it, like, how do I even make this up? Dunwall did not respond to comment. Eve's angels did not return an email and the two phone numbers attached to the charity were either not in service or went to directly full inboxes. Another bunk organization. I, I just, I, I don't, you know, and then, oh my God, it gets even better. <laughs> okay. So now other clout gobbling that she did was to insert herself into the Tate lawsuit and try to represent one of them. And I've heard through the grapevine, they don't want to come forward who they are, so I can't out them. But now that it's in print, they clearly talk to these people too. So I've heard this before. You know, it, it's, it, it's that she said she claimed, Eliza Blue claimed to represent two anonymous, quote, survivors of Tate. Uh, 
Some of his most rabid fans, along with other right-wing users, began scrutinizing Blue's black story, backstory. They posted clips from past media appearances, started trafficking, doubted trafficking claims, and trolled her with screenshots of a music video. Um, but what's interesting here is, quote, she clung to us all from out of nowhere. She had none of the attributes of uh, a, a, a Jeffrey victim, yet insinuated otherwise. Like, what? Even her ex-boyfriend spoke out, saying that she told him once there's three people that she would cheat on him for, Ben Shapiro, Elon Musk, and there might have been one other. She told that to her ex-boyfriend. But the connection with, with Jeffrey and his wife, since emerging as this activist, Blue has crossed paths with Jeffrey's victims. In September, back in 2020, she announced on Twitter that she had accepted a new position, but victims refused silence, which at the time was a nonprofit, um, a high profile, you know, high profile of one of the, those uh, whose lives were uh, impacted by him. She t- uh, uh, but later, but by November of that year, just a few months later, Blue tweeted that she had stepped back into part-time role with the organization. Hmm. Teresa Helm, one uh, one of the women who were affected by this creep, Jeffrey, and former director of the Victims Refuse Silence, said she became friends with Blue and asked her to join the group before it dissolved. She's been almost like a freelancer in the world of advocacy, who now works, said Helm, who now works for the National Center on whatever, whatever, which was once known as Morality and Media. I mean, it's interesting that all these, that she has managed to insert herself into all of these scenarios, all these, all these people's lives. Her ex-boyfriend doesn't have very nice, nice thing to say about her. Of course. I mean, that's, you know, whatever. Um, turns out she was trying to get her female friend into it, her married female friend into it. Uh, this rabbit hole goes so deep and I'm very happy that so many people are covering it. Uh, and I hope that you've enjoyed the video and that you share the video and, and, uh, well, I'll keep going here.